Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Together with my Bighorn Sheep Buddies back here, let's take a hard, close look at what we can read about Yggdrasil, the great tree with roots in the different worlds, according to Snorri Sturluson's Prose Edda. What I'm going to read for you here is first the Old Norse text of Snorri's description of Yggdrasil. I'm going to leave out his quotes from the Poetic Edda, which really deserve their own focused study, and a couple other things that aren't completely ancillary, that aren't, aren't completely um, Yggdrasil-centric, let's say. Then I'll give you my translation from my forthcoming translation of the Prose Edda, forthcoming from Hackett Publishing Company, a companion volume to my Poetic Edda, probably out in the next couple of years. So Snorri says that Yggdrasil is huvudstadrin, eta helgistadrin, godana, och thar skulu golden ega doma sina huerna. It is the capital or holy site of the gods, and there the gods must hold their judgments every day, so it's a court of sorts for the gods. Furthermore, he says, Askrin er alra trio mester och betster. Limar hans drevask um heim allan og standa uver himni. Trior utter tresens haldeth vi upp og standa avar breit. Einer med åsum en onur med prim forsum, thar sem fordum var ginnungagap. In tridja stender uver nivelheimi, og under theri rot er hörgelmir, en nidhogr gnagar medan rotina. En undir theri rot er til hrim thursa horvir. Thar er mimis brunner, er spekt och mannvit er i folgit, och heitir så mimir er å brunin. Han er fuller av visendum, för því at han drekker or bruninum av horninu gjallar horni. Thar kom allfoder, och bedisk en strykjar av brunnenum en hand fek egi, för en han lagde auga sitt at vedi. Tridja rot asksens stender o himni, och under theri rot er brunner så er mjok er helager, er heitir urdar brunner. Thar egu goden domstad, sin. Hvernda grida æsir þangat upp um bivrost, hon heitir og osbru. Þat er þú sér rátt í bóganum, er elder brennandi. Upp á himin mundu ganga hrýmþursar og bergrísar, ef ollum veri fort á bivrost þeim er fara vilja. Margir staðir eru á himni fagrir, og er þar allt gudlík fórn fyrir. Þar stendur sallar einn fagr undir askinum við brunnin, og úr þeim sall koma þrjór mojar þær svo heita, úrður verðandi skuld. Þessar mojar skapa mónum aldar, þær kolum vér nornir. Orn einn sittur í limum asksins, og er hann margs vitandi, en í milli augna honum sittur haukur, svo er heitir veðurfólnir. Íkorni svo er heitir rattatóskur, renn upp og nýður eftir askinum, og ber ofundar ord milli arnarins og nýðhóks. En fjórir hyrtir renna í limum asksins og býta bar, en svo margir ormar, eru í hvergum með nýðhók að engi tunga mó telja. En er það sagt að nornir þær en byggja við úrðarbrunn, taka hverndag vatn í brunnunum og með eurinn þann er líkur um brunnin og eusa upp yfir askin til þess að egi skuli límar hans trena eða fúna. En það vatn er svo heilag at aldir hlutir þeir er þar koma í brunnin verða svo hvítir 
som hinna su er skjällheter och innan ligger vid äggskor. Su dock er tatan av fäller och jordena, tatt kallar man hunangfall och tarav födask biflugor. Tver fuglar födask i urtarbund. Där heter Spanier och av dem fuglum hever kommit att fuglakyn er svo heter. Oh, this little guy is amazing. They got onto that cliff and for four minutes it took me to read that in Old Norse <laughs> with hooves. That they're, they're pretty little. They're, it's mostly a group of, of, of young ones, young uh, bighorn, Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. All right, so what is that big block of text I just read to you in Old Norse? It's a hummingbird battle rages above me. The ash tree is the biggest and best of all trees, that specific ash tree, Yggdrasil. Its limbs are spread over the whole world, all the world, and stand over heaven. Now notice, this is speaking of world, Hamr, as singular. And Old Norse writers are pretty inconsistent about this nine worlds versus one world distinction. Three roots of the tree hold it up and stand very broadly. One is among the gods and another with the giants, or Jotnar. Cream Thors are specifically here, Frost Giants, a term uh, surely alliterative in uh, Snorri's source. In fact, I think specifically his source here is the stands of Grimnus Mall, uh, where Ginungagap used to be. The third stands over Nivelhamer, Dark Home, that's synonymous with Hell in the quote unquote present tense of Norse mythology. And under that root is Hwergelmir. Now, Hwergelmir is the poison well from Nivelhamer um, that generated the uh, the liquid that contributed to making the first living beings in the Norse creation story. And Nithogr gnaws that root from beneath. Now Nithogr is the serpent in hell. And under that root, which turns toward the Jotnar, there is Mimisbrunner, the well of Mimir, which wisdom and wisdom are hidden in. And Mimir is the name of the one who owns that well. The well is full of wisdom because he drinks out of the well through the horn, Gjallarhorn. Now, Gjallarhorn is also the horn that Heimdallr will blow to signal uh, that Ragnarok is coming. Um, and it is the horn of Gjol, the horn of the river of the underworld, the, the river Gjol is what you cross to get into hell. The exact connections, how it gets this name, why Heimdallr has it, but Mimir has it, uh, all of this, of course, is just part of the Norse myth extended edition. People want to be there, but just isn't there. Our, our sources are very spotty and, and, and hinty. All father, which I propose means all orderer rather than all father as a title of Odin's. So I've talked about that in another video. At any rate, Odin came there and asked for one drink from the well, and he didn't get it before he laid down his eye as the price. So this is how Odin loses his eye. The third root of the ash tree, and yes, sick, because uh, he already said third root, but whatever, it's Snorri, he can't count. He really can't count. Um, the third root of the ash tree stands in heaven. Take that or leave that. I mean, he, he often calls Oscar there the realm of the gods, uh, Himen, the sky or heaven. This is no doubt influenced by his medieval Christian education. He sees Oscar there as analogous to Christian heaven, which is uh, usually imagined as being in the sky. Um, but it's quite possible based on the fact that travel to and from Oscar there seems to be by land most of the time, right, by the Rainbow Bridge, that it's a physical place, possibly meant to be on top of a mountaintop, and I'm not just saying that because I like mountaintops. Anyway, so the third root of the ash tree stands in heaven, and under that root is the well, which is very holy, which is called Urtharbrunner, well of Urther. There the gods have their judgment place, where they hold their court. Every day, the gods ride up there over Bivros. Now notice that seems to suggest that this is over them somewhere, right? 
they even have to travel to Bifrost to get up up to where this well is, and going up to a well is kind of an interesting uh, thing here. All right. It is that Bifrost is also called the God Bridge, Ospru. What you see as red in the rainbow is burning fire. The frost giants and hill giants, all just different words for Giltnar, uh, would be able to walk up into the sky if everything could walk Bifrost, which wanted to. I'm sure these big horns can cross no matter what. Look at what they can do with the little hooves. Amazing. Many places are beautiful in heaven, and everything there is under divine protection. There stands a beautiful house under the ash tree next to the well, and out of that house come three young women who are named Urther, Berlundi, and Skul. These are the three Norns. These young women shape the lifespan for men. We call them Norns. An eagle sits in the limbs of the ash tree, and he is very wise, and between his eyes sits a hawk named Featherfulnir, or Weather Worsener. Now, no doubt, uh, based on the fact that in Eddic poetry and other more archaic sources, we really just see one bird of prey mentioned as being atop the tree. What's happened here is Snorri has heard that there's a hawk or there's an eagle. Of course, the old poems don't care. They're going to use whichever word alliterates, Halcott or Orn, because, of course, Old Norse poetry is alliterative. But Snorri can never just throw away information or prioritize information or triage information. He has to kind of combine things. So he decides that it's got to be a hawk and an eagle, and so he makes up this thing about it. the eagle with a hawk sitting on its face. Not as sure-footed as these big horns. All right. <laughs> a squirrel who's named Ratatusker, Rat Tusk, runs up and down along the ash tree and brings insulting words between the eagle and Neithoker. So Neithoker is chewing on the root in hell. The uh, eagle's on top of the tree, and they're insulting each other, and Ratatusker is taking the insults back and forth between them. Right, you know. Tell the eagle I said his mom is so fat. Oh well, yeah, we'll tell the serpent that I said his mom is so old, you know. She remembers when Emir was whole. All right, but four deer run in the limbs of the ash tree and bite its foliage. Now, bar, the word that's used here, usually means pine needles, but perhaps it's here because there's an alliterating source poem, right? Bita, bar, bite. The pine needles bite the foliage. An ash tree is not a, not a pine tree, so. And so many... Serpents are in Hwergilmir, the well, with Neithogr in hell, that no tongue may count them. It is said that the Norns that live next to the well of Orther every day take water in the well and with it the moist earth or clay that lies around the well, and they sprinkle it up over the ash tree so that the limbs of the tree won't shrivel or rot. Now, why? Right? Is there some... It's, it's not stated what exactly... Uh, the situation is environmental or, or otherwise that would cause the tree to, to shrivel or rot. You know, is it, in, is it under a lot of sunlight? Is it in a very humid environment? Uh, it's, it's, it's not quite stated why it needs to be protected from this um, by such constant action. In that vatn er svo heilagt at allir hlutir þeir er þar koma í brunnen verða svo hvítir. So, and that water is so holy that everything that comes into the well becomes so becomes as white as the membrane called the outer shell membrane which lies inside the eggshell. Now keep in mind the Norse use white to mean not just a color but also brightness. Presumably what's going on here is that since white is associated with brightness they're saying you get really bright and shiny when you come into this well, right? It makes you glow in a way that they associate with beauty. And I guess modern western culture sort of associates glowing stuff with beauty. I mean, a lot of makeup, I guess, has the effect of making different, you know, making women's eyes glow and, and things like that, maybe. Uh, but the Norse definitely very strongly associate, like, glowing things with beauty. And so the water of the well apparently makes you especially glowy. The well, which, uh, the, blah, blah, blah. the dew, which comes off of the tree, falls onto the earth, and men call that honeydew. And from that, bees are born. Two birds are born in the, uh, in the well of Urther. They are called swans, and from them, uh, the kind of bird which is called that has come. So there you have the most comprehensive account of 
Yggdrasil and its environs uh, that is to be found in our genuine old medieval sources of Norse myth, the Prose Edda. Now, there are many other uh, more archaic references to it in the Eddic poems, but this is the most comprehensive source, and this really has to be the basis of, um, of one's imagination of what the tree ought to look like and be like if one wants to, to stay fairly authentic. Um, notice that the realms that are discussed are never presented as like planets. I think people too often, because of our modern conceptions of what world means, think of something like me, the god of the Oscar, god of the hell, as planets, but they are realms, right? Mithgarther is, is explicitly surrounded by an outer ocean beyond which is Jotunheim, are the realms usually discussed in the plural where the, the, the Jotunar and giants live. They're not on two different planets uh, connected by cyber highways or whatever they are in, in various different pop culture versions of this. I'll continue talking about some related subjects in future videos, but for now, let uh, the bighorns uh, and me Wish you all the best from beautiful Colorado. Now let me make a quick PSA here. Um, I know many people are, and, and I'm flattered that many people are interested in coming to the University of Colorado to study with me or, or take my classes. But remember, as discussed in several videos, I am leaving the Nordic program at the end of spring 2020. So I will no longer be teaching classes like Norse mythology, Icelandic sagas at CU. If those classes continue to be taught at CU, they'll be taught by somebody else. I will no longer have any association with the Nordic program. I will still be at the University of Colorado in an unpaid position as resident scholar. And hopefully uh, during this period, I'll have more time to uh, make these videos, which of course reach more people than any classroom ever will, um, work on my upcoming translations such as the Prose Edda and work on my class in Norse mythology for the great courses. But Please don't come here thinking um, that that I run some some Hogwarts for Old Norse. I, that I, I don't, and you're not going to find that anywhere, actually. There really aren't any good jobs teaching this stuff, and I need to try to make a living. Um, and actually, given the lack of rewards in teaching this stuff in a conventional way in classrooms, I, I need to take the time away from the classroom to work on these projects that really reach the people that are interested in this stuff, the videos, the books, and now great courses. All right. Well, as always, for beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best and uh, good health and the best to you and yours during this uh, whole coronavirus situation in April 2020. All the best.